Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. I drifted so far, would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time, but Jesus appeared and said, this one is mine. Now I'm safe from all harm, for he walked through the storm when he came looking for me. Hello and welcome to Addiction Free. I'm your host, Evangelist Candy Rose. And wow, I know I always say wow, but I love testimonies. And I am so excited because I am sitting here in Ohio. This is Hamilton, Ohio. Hamilton, Ohio, just outside of Cincinnati. And I got to preach today at the Dream Center Church. And this is the pastor, Pastor Wendell Conning, and his beautiful wife, Kim. And he's going to give you his testimony. He has an addiction-free testimony. So, Pastor, I'm just going to turn it over to you. And if you would just look into the camera and tell the folks what God's done in your life. Thank you, Candy. I am so excited to be a part and even to be on the show because what an amazing opportunity. You know, the Bible tells us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And we stand on that. And that's one of the things when we started the Dream Center, you know, we, we stood on uh, seeing people within the city of Hamilton, and I know it's all over. You know, the addiction, it's all over. Uh, you know, pig slop is pig slop, regardless of where where it is. You can be wealthy and be in pig slop. So we understand what pig slop really is, you know. So, you know, in my life, I, I struggled with addiction. I was, I, was, I was with alcohol and drugs. But also I, had, uh, I was into rock music, and we had a band called Hell and High Water. Not Hell and High Water, but Hell and High Water. And it was uh, a, a band, uh, one of the band members of Leonard Skinner actually named our band, uh, Alan Collins. And uh, we got to open up for, uh, after it was after the plane crash and while they were doing their different bands, we played for them. And actually, one of our leaders actually played for them. But during my time of playing, and one of the times we got to play on Atlantic Beach, we played like for 20,000 people. And it was a great opportunity. At the same time, Leonard Skinner actually is not a band member. He was our gym teacher that made fun of their long hair. Uh, he actually had nightclubs and took advantage of his name. So he actually um, came and listened to us and liked us and wanted to sign us up for a record contract. At the same time, our whole family was a mess. My dad was working in Saudi Arabia. My mom was suicidal. My dad, um, or he was working in Saudi Arabia. My mom. Also, uh, my brother was in, the, was in the, like a, a, a second-degree black belt, and, and uh, my sister was going through a divorce, and our family was a wreck, and my mom got invited. She went to TVN, a, a TV show. That's what's so important about TV. It's so important because somebody may watch this today and say, man, I need help, and it'll, it'll take them to somebody. And somebody invited her to 725 Campbell Avenue. This is this building right here. So I came with her because I wanted to be nice to her because we were going to go on the road. And um, I came to church, and I came right down to this altar. I, well, I actually, I want to tell you, I never lifted my hands in church, didn't believe in it. I lifted my hands at rock concerts. You know, it's funny, you know, how we justify things, you know. And I came down to this altar, and a guy asked me, do you, do you know Christ? And I thought I was saved. And I, yeah, I knew Christ, but I didn't know him no more than the man on the moon. And uh, I gave, uh, I gave just to please my mom, and then we went back on the road, and I just was miserable. She got her life straightened out. My sister got her life straightened out. You know, all of us started getting saved, and um, then um, um, I – came back to get more equipment, to get ready for that record contract. And my mom says, why don't you go talk to that preacher over there? So I came over here, and July 28, 1983, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I gave my heart to Jesus and this place. And um, um, had a great opportunity, went to Rama Bible School, but really was a youth pastor, children's pastor, all the different ministries at different churches, and but had a heart for the city and wanted to do something in the city. So this... This right here uh, is what we started. Kim and I, we started in 2001. We just really believed that we wanted to have a heart for city and, and do something. Uh, you, Kim, what, what, what is our theme about the Dream Center? You know, when we talk about the Dream Center, what's our main heartbeat here, would you say? I would say it's just restoring dreams to the inner city and giving them hope. And we just want to give hope. Jesus is hope. We know that he's the only answer. He is, you know, he, he isn't a way. He is the way. You know, he is the life, you know. And we understand that. He's truth, and, and that's why we, we truly believe it. And we started this in 2000, 
one, we probably gave out, thou or I don't know how many backpacks, but thousands of backpacks every year, school supplies. We feed kids on Sunday morning. We feed them on Wednesday nights. We Right in the, in the sanctuary where we're at, uh, kids come here and have church on Wednesday night. Downstairs, youth have church. And um, we, we do Christmas gifts. We do Thanksgiving turkeys. And it's just a great opportunity to be able to pour into these people. And Candy, I want to thank you for what you do because, you know, to be able to share your testimony across the world is so important. When you share today about your testimony, it just means how important testimonies are. And so I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you, Pastor. This is what a wonderful opportunity. Thanks for asking me to come and minister because I love to brag on Jesus. Amen. For those of you who've never seen my show, I am a former stripper and a prostitute and had a stripping business. And I love to brag on Jesus. Thank Amen. you so much. Thank you. God bless you. God Thank bless you, Kim. Addictions. Addictions of all types are killing precious people. Overdose of opioids is on the rise. Prescription drugs and alcohol cause families to be torn apart. Everyone suffers, including the children, especially the children. If you or a loved one want help, go to addictionfaithprograms.com to find faith-based resources. There is help. There is hope. Well, friends, now we have another guest for you. This is Mary Brown. She is the worship leader at this awesome church here at the Dream Center. Mary, would you just look into the camera and tell our audience what God has done in your life? Oh, this is my daughter, Brianna. Um, so when I um, was younger, I went through a lot of abuse. Um, my oldest brother molested me, and my father, um, he was just abusive, and we just walked around in a lot of fear, and um, I started being sexually abused when I was like six to um, like 13, and I couldn't tell anyone because I walked around in the fear that um, I would be in trouble for it, so I put up with it for all those years until I started to realize that it wasn't right. Um, I just started to look for love, but I was doing it the wrong way, and uh, so to go up a little bit more, um, <laughs> When um, I was 18, um, her father and I were on and off, and then we finally got together, and I was pregnant with her. And um, so uh, in the relationship, I wasn't really happy, and I kind of just settled. And um, my mind and my heart was telling me, nobody's ever going to want you. You might as well just settle. And so I settled in that, and uh, I was unhappy, but we had my daughter, and um, so as time went on, I just was unhappy in the relationship. I had got pregnant again with my son, and um, out of the unhappiness, um, someone caught my eye, and I got into an affair. Um, nothing I'm proud of, but I had fell into a trap and was in an affair, and so... Um, out of that, um, we got, um, as time went on, the affair, we got caught, and um, I ended up losing um, custody of my children to their father because I was just going through a lot of stuff. I left off with the guy, and I ended up getting pregnant again with my youngest daughter, and she, um, she is 14 now. And so um, with her uh, father, he was uh, mentally abusive. Um, he never made me feel wanted. Um, I was addicted to him, though. There was such a draw to him that I was just in this addiction with him, and I was addicted to drugs. He would never show me the love that I ever needed. And um, there was just abuse, and there was drug use, and I really started on um, downers, which were Xanaxes, and I was on pain pills for the longest time because I, I was longing for that love that I never got, and so I just was taking those drugs to just void out everything and just go through life. And so as time went on, um, he had gotten some trouble, and he had went to Mexico, and so me and my youngest daughter, daughter started traveling there, and uh, we were going back and forth. I would leave my children, and it was just a lot of um, brokenness. And so um, the very last time I went, I was stuck in Mexico, and uh, I knew that God was real because I experienced it with my grandparents, but I never had a relationship with him. 
And so um, when I was in Mexico, I burned all my bridges with my family and my friends, and I just had nobody. It was just me and my youngest daughter. He would leave me in this house. We were in the mountains, and so I had no one. And I just began to cry out to God. I knew he was real, and so I just began to cry and plead with him to, I told him, I said, if you will rescue me out of this, I will serve you the rest of my life. And so um, at that moment, I ended up walking outside, and there was this huge rainbow like I had never seen. And I knew God was speaking to me, saying, I'm going to get you home. And so as time went on, uh, my sister called to Mexico and said, Mom's going to come get you. And he made a way for me. And so um, my journey began with the Lord. And when I got back, I had a lot to face. Um, I had to uh, face my children that I'd left and just face a lot of issues. I had to spend 30 days in jail because I had a lot of back child support. Um, But I was instantly delivered of drugs. When I gave my heart to God, I was delivered of drugs. And so... um, I started looking for a church. Um, Well, I spent the 30 days in jail. I met the Lord in there even more. There was people that would come, and I got an awesome touch from God. And then I started looking for a church, and uh, I found the Dream Center, and I began here, and the worship just drawed me. And and I knew that God was doing healing process because I would cry all the time. And so um, that began my process with the Lord, and he's just healed me, set me free of so much, all addictions gone, and um, I am here, I am free, and I just want to reach women, I want to reach children at a young age, and I just want to help people. So. Wow, that is awesome. Thank you for sharing with us. Oh, praise God. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And now we have another guest who is Franco. Wait till you hear his testimony, too. And you know what? This is what it's about, bragging on Jesus. Well, friends, now I have another amazing guest for you that VTN, the other network that I'm on, suggested that I come to Ohio, which I did, and interview Franco. Now, Franco was a professional bodybuilder, and he has an amazing testimony of the transformation God did in his life. So, Franco, I'd like you to introduce your wife and your son there and tell the folks what God has done in your life. This is my love, my sons, because there's one in the oven. This is my lovely wife, <laughs> this is my lovely wife, Morgan, and my son, Frankie Jr., who saved my life when he was nine years old from a widowmaker heart attack. Praise Jesus. And before I tell you what God has done in my life, let me just tell you this. Before I met Jesus, I was a stinking hot mess. I mean, I was selfish, self-centered, cursed, empty, lost, void of feeling, and I was like just a dead man walking. That was my life before God. Ten years old, my father and mother decided to get a divorce. Me and my dad had a plan for my life that I was going to be an All-American football player. I was working out and doing everything I could. My dad was my coach, and I was on my way to being an All-American football player. But mom and dad decided to get a divorce. He took off, didn't see him for years, which left a big hole in my heart. So I came up with my own new plan. My new plan is to, was I was going to be the best teenage bodybuilder in the world. And I had to take care of that void that my father left in myself, that big empty hole he left in my heart. So I took care of that with marijuana, alcohol, which would later on go to pills, cocaine, crack, crystal meth, and heroin. Actually, heroin at 30 years old took my life. Heroin overdose wound up in a trauma unit. In Newark, New Jersey, no, I was dead because I woke up on life support, and the doctor looked me in the eyes and said, Franco, well, he didn't say Franco because he didn't know who I was. He said, young man, we had to bring you back. So that was some of the stuff that that drugs did in my life. We know the enemy, he came to steal, kill, and destroy. When I was 24 years old, I became Mr. America. Well, let me take you back. When I was 18 years old, I was Mr. Teenage World Champion, best-built teenager in the world, 24 years old, I got my pro card and became, all of, became one of the best pro bodybuilders in the world. Signed a contract with Cybergenics, which became the largest supplement company in the world. And I sold my soul to the devil. They offered me a contract to tell a lie to the world. And this lie made me the biggest liar in the world. Okay? And with that lie, man, I had to turn my back on the truth and hurt people that I love. So a lot of my brokenness came from my childhood because my dad was manic depressant. And he instilled fear in our house. He rolled our house with an iron fist. There was a lot of beatings, and I got a lot of beatings. One I didn't deserve at 13 years old. My dad pulled a Mike Tyson on me, knocked me out cold. Okay? So, you know, 
the idea, this ministry thing that I'm in today, I didn't choose it. It chose me. Because the idea of a loving, caring, providing, uh, nurturing father, I didn't, that was not my father. So I didn't understand a God that, that was going to be like that in my life. Um, like I said, he gave me beatings. My dad was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So my life was full of drugs. And I became one of the best bodybuilders in the world on drugs. And people ask me all the time, how did you do it? I don't know. I just did it. I did a lot of drugs, but I worked real hard. And like I said, I became a world-famous bodybuilder. And that fame and fortune had me travel around the world. I got famous. I mean, anywhere I got off a plane in any country I was in, people were asking me for my autograph. That's, that's who I was. I was on the cover of a dozen magazines, uh, TV commercials on ESPN. I was just world famous. But that lifestyle led to a life of death and destruction. Like I said, I died from a heroin overdose. I died from a widow maker heart attack. And, and thank God that I didn't, I didn't actually die that day because my biggest fear in my life was if I died, who would come to my funeral? I mean, I, that addiction led to homelessness, unemployability, mental distraught, emotional pain. I mean, I was suicidal and homeless with a wife and minor son. I mean, my, I was on top of the world, which eventually the life, of cr- the life of drug addiction led to a life of crime, which had me put in prison for three years. And in prison, I was crippled in fear. In fact, I was so broken in prison, I had no strength that I couldn't even carry my prison box across the prison yard. That's how broken I was. But see, God showed me later on the story of that box, why he made sure I couldn't carry my box across the yard. And I don't want to get there now, but I'll tell you about that later. Anyways, that lifestyle led me to a life of death and destruction and crippled in fear in, in prison. And in prison, I laid in my rock asking myself all the time, what in the heck happened to me? How did I get here? I was one of the best in the world, and now I'm a broken convict. I'm a, I'm a number. I was no longer a person, but I was a number. And I laid there, and I asked myself, I said, God, I know you're real. I mean, I had doubts about you, but I know you're real. So if you're really real and you are who you say you are, would you please show up and give me some help? Because I was hopeless, and I did not want to live another day. And it just like that, when I felt like I was drowning in quicksand and I couldn't take another breath, God took his mighty hand down from heaven and grabbed mine and pulled me up out of that murky quicksand. See, God's hand that day was the light, love, and hope that this hopeless man needed to survive one more day. And you know, today, after that, he rescued me. I, it's my job to go rescue people. And that's what I do. I have a ministry today called Jacked Up for B- Jesus. And it's our vision to encourage, motivate, inspire the broken, bound, and bruised into living a victorious and purposeful life in Christ. Now, I told you what I was like before God. Today, instead of being selfish, I'm do my best to be selfish. Instead of being self-centered, I'm Christ-centered. I was once void of feeling, and today I'm void, full of joy. I was once cursed, and now I'm blessed. And I'm no longer a dead man walking. I'm spiritually alive in Christ. That's who I am. I'm a child of God. Praise God. Now stick around because we're going to lead you in a prayer to the Lord. Well, friends, once again, you've heard some amazing testimonies. And Franco, I am so thankful that Franco let me come here to Ohio and interview him. And and let me tell you, folks, this is what this show is all about. You get to hear the devastation that the devil has done in our lives, but then you get to hear about the restoration and the good things that God has done when we give our lives to Christ. Uh, And and Franco, you mentioned about, he talked about when he was in prison. He got, here he was, the big bodybuilder, and uh, well known. Now his body is being wrecked because and being destroyed because of the drugs and the addiction. And he doesn't even have the strength to carry his box in the prison. He is just beat down, and that's what the devil does. But Franco, I want you to talk about the box there for a minute, and then we're going to lead him in a prayer of the Lord, okay? You know, the Lord showed me a year ago, and I asked myself all the time, why in the world did I have to go through that experience where I was on a prison yard in front of hundreds of inmates, and I couldn't carry my prison box? It was the most humiliating 20 minutes of my life, and he, why I had no strength, and he gave me pants too big and no handles to carry the box, because he showed me, he said, Frank, see that box that you couldn't carry? The reason why you couldn't carry that box is what was really in that box, because it was really only weighed 25 pounds, is you were trying to carry the heavy chains of your addiction. You're carrying around all that depression and anxiety. You're carrying around mental illness. You're carrying around pain, shame, guilt, condemnation. You're carrying around all this sin of your life is in that box. And there's no way you're going to ever be able to carry that box. So it wasn't until I was able to surrender my life and I took my box and I put it at the foot of the cross. So the question is, what's in your box? What are you carrying around today? 
the heavy chains of addiction? Is it pornography? Is it alcohol? Is it sex? What is it that, that's in your box today that you get, need to give to Christ so you can be set free and redeemed and delivered? Yes, and this is why we bring you this show, because we want to show you that Jesus is the answer. Just like Jesus set him free, he has set me free, too, from all the bondages of my, uh, my uh, stripping and prostitution and, and all my addictions. And so now I'm asking Franco if he would agree with me in prayer right now that you are going to give your life to Jesus. Because let me tell you, the devil said he's come to, the Bible says the thief, that's the devil, has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ the other came to give life and give it to us in abundance. Yes. And so you like that new life? All you got to do is confess it, but then repent. Be willing to leave it behind. If you're willing to leave it behind, the Holy Spirit comes in and gives you the power because that's what happened to you. You made that full commitment, and when you did, right there in prison. And then what happened is then God used you right there in prison to start ministering right there. So if you're watching this, I even have somebody on death row, a few people watching this that have seen the show and, and wrote me. And if you're in prison, you may be in not in prison, but you're in the prison of your heart and your mind, and God wants to set you free today. So we're agreeing. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I want to live for you with my whole heart. I'm willing to leave the old life behind and follow you, Jesus. I love you, and I know you love me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you just prayed that prayer, you just received salvation. And you have a new life empowered by the Holy Spirit to be a conqueror, no longer be a victim, but be the victor in Jesus' name. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Oh, and I got to say one more thing. And now he goes back into what, what prison ministries? Oh, I go, I'm, I'm on the Bill Glass Prison Ministry, Prison Fellowship, and Alpha Prison Reentry Ministry, the three largest prison ministries in the world today. I'm a speaker for them today. So I, you know, I did everything in my power to get out of prison. Now I'm doing everything in my power to get back into prison. Praise the Lord. How good is that? Woo! And God wants to use your life. Psalms 107.2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Jesus loves you, and we'll see you next time. Addiction Free Ministry presents powerful resources written by its CEO, Candy Rose. Her autobiography, Spirits of Seduction, proves Christ can transform any lifestyle from X-rated to G-rated. Candy Rose believes testimonies build faith, encouraging others they too can have that new life in Christ. Go to Amazon.com or their website, AddictionFreeMinistry.com, to receive these life-changing resources for yourself or a loved one. There is help. There is hope. Friends, I'd like to ask you if you would like to be a partner of ours. Be a recovery partner. Join us on this team to help us be able to get out there on more TV networks. We're already on two networks, 23 million homes, and it takes partners. And by the way, to my partners who are watching this, thank you. I appreciate you. Some give $10 all the way up to $500. But whatever you can give, it helps us. So we're just thanking you right now. The information is on the screen. And we're just, uh, we're believing that you're going to join us to help see many people get set free from alcohol and drugs. Hello, I'm Gary Jennings, founder of the Ark of Praise Church and the Father's House. Uh, the Father's House program is a residential home for men and women struggling with life-controlling problems. We call our program a Christian discipleship program. We're very uh, much about Jesus Christ, and we feel like he is the solution to helping people heal their hearts and change their lives and restoring families. Hi, friends. This is Candy Rose, TV host of Addiction Free. My church, the Ark of Praise, and I would like to introduce our pastor, Gary Jennings. Him and his wife, Danette, are the founders of a recovery home, the Father's House. And we'd like to present his CD, You Chose to Be My Friend. And his friend, Jill Crabb, produced the CD using his songs. And all proceeds will go to the Father's House. To receive your copy, go to thearcofpraise.org. Hi, my name is Jared Flanagan, President and CEO of Teen Challenge Women's Ministries. We have Teen Challenge Women's Ministries that we are the leaders of. And we have centers in Arkansas and Missouri, and Tennessee, and Mississippi. We feel like 
addiction is the number one in the arsenal of the enemy against God's children in these last days. And we are on a crusade to fight it. We are absolutely against it. Uh, we know that the hand of God will prevail to anyone that will come to him as a solution. The only requirement to get in, absolute requirement to get in, is a desire to change. I'm Richie and Carly Willis, and we just want to tell you we both were in major addictions in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We both come out of major, major drugs and major, major addictions. We just want to tell you that today we have men's homes in Hot Springs called Solomon's Porch. There's three homes for men. Uh, we have our own church today, 411 Highland Street, called Highland Street Revival. We have a roofing company today called Willis and Son Roofing. We have crews working for us and people in the office, and we're just thankful. This is Pastor Tim and my lovely wife, Leslie. Uh, we pastor New Life Church, but we also run Project New Start Recovery Homes. Uh, these are homes designed to help men and women overcome addiction, bondages. We deal with any type of bondage that there is. We've been doing this for 20 years. God has just uh, literally changed lives through faith in Jesus Christ. Give us a call at 870-523-8413. God bless. Hi, I'm Jamie Nash, and this is my beautiful wife, Regina. I was in addiction for over 23 years of my life. In 2005, I went into prison for four and a half years. And while I was in there, I wrote uh, From Meth to Life, One Cell at a Time, and Five Steps to Freedom. If you would be interested in us coming to your church or organization, we'd be more than happy to and let everybody there is let everybody know that there is hope after addiction. I'm Lisa Haynes, Clinical Director for Shalom Recovery Centers. Shalom Recovery Centers is a nine month Christ centered program. We provide services for both men and women, and we seek to serve those looking for help with life controlling issues and addiction. The Harbor Home is really a house of miracles. It is located in a small church in central Arkansas, in Conway, Arkansas, and it's a faith-based program anywhere from six months to one year, uh, residential for women coming out of drug and alcohol addiction. We have women of all ages that come to the Harbor Home and from all over the United States. And it really is a place where people can come, get down to the real root cause of the issue, our first six months is a time of healing, a time of reflection, and really an opportunity for you to come to realize your value and your worth, and uh, really to develop and cultivate a real relationship with Jesus Christ, which we believe is the answer for all addictive behaviors. Tell me how you came to know me. Was it at some preacher's plea? Were you all bound up with worry When he came to set you free Did it take you your whole life 